I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith & Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and this week try to answer some more of your questions. What was that Nissan people carry a version of a Primera? People carry a version of a Primera? Yeah, I'm sure it was a Primera. No, an Almera. Not, not the Almera Tino. Al- Al- Almera Tino. That's exactly mm. what it was. Again, sounds like um, Italian cabaret act, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> oh, my God. The tightness of the white trousers sported by Almera Tino. <laughs> oh, Almera Tino. Absolute player of women of a certain age. He just he just he pulls he just drags them in like a like a boat with a dragnet. <laughs> I think El Miratino though is all one word. That's his first name. His full name is like uh, <laughs> El Miratino Bumpenzella, and you, you go, oh right, okay. But uh, for the stage, I just got El Miratino. El Miratino. He's a he's a good. He's very practical. <laughs> very capacious. He's got yeah. Despite having very tight trousers, has lots of pockets in his waistcoat. <laughs> <laughs> Cubbies. Unexpected <laughs> compartment. Yeah, mm. I love that. I love it. For stuff. I, uh, do you anyway. know something? I I've had a real. I love learning about vehicles that I didn't know about, and today. Mm-hmm. I've learnt about a vehicle that just has me giggling. It constantly has me giggling. A pro, uh, according to, and I'm, I'm going to name check them on, uh, f- from Instagram, Silodrome, Silodrome. Oh, yes, I've seen that. Yeah, Silodrome today. Good, they, they're good. They're, they're a really cool um, like car culture type magazine. Mm. They did a post... Of the 1990 Mazda suitcase car concept. What? Have you ever heard of the, the suitcase <laughs> car? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Because I just thought it was a joke. I thought this is this is definitely not real. I'm going to look this up while you're talking. It on, is. You've, you've, it is brilliant. Uh, so I just immediately went, oh, come on. This can't be real. I just don't believe it's real. Well, it's real. In 1990, this is when Mazda were at peak cr- creativity. Yeah, they made yeah. the amazing suitcase car um, for an event in 1991 called the Fantasy Yard. Which Holy is, shit! Yeah, where a group of employees could come up with the most creative, innovative ways of producing a moving machine. In inverted commas, I'm doing, I'm doing uh, finger thingies as I'm saying it. And basically, they bought a really large, <laughs> they bought the largest Samsonite suitcase that you could buy. And then dismantled it and then built inside it what looks like a mashup of a mini moto and a cart, like a cart back axle. So yeah, you sat it you sat in front end. Yeah, you sat in an open suitcase and then it had wheels and a and a and a small seat and bars and you could ride it a suitcase to work or oh, I don't know, you out say what? of it. It's brilliant. Bloody, I wish I'd seen this like three or four years ago because um, for the second series of the Grand Tour, we were asked by Amazon if we could get celebrities on, you know, uh, as guests, which we hadn't done in the first series. Yeah. And our executive producer, Andy Wilman, said, I think rather than have a car that they have to lap around a track, which is going to be difficult. At that point, we're still planning to be in a different location every week. We should just mark out a little course. It's always the same in a car park or whatever next to the tent, wherever we are in the world. And we need a little machine to go around it. And what if it was a suitcase that you could drive? And then we can claim, you know, we've had to pack it in the hole to get it here. So whichever part of the world we're we're going to be in the whole thing got dropped when we um we decided just to stick the tent in a field in oxfordshire and bugger all the traveling around the world but um <laughs> i i went so far as to speak to some engineers about how this would be possible and i, I even spoke to um the um the guy at ariel simon saunders you oh know, yeah who, who, who's the man mr ariel he is I said, look you know is there a way that you could like make an atom really small so it would sort of fold into a suitcase and he went mm, basically no, no because <laughs> there's not a lot of spare space on an atom as it is you, you could saw the nose off so that your feet were the forward most extremity Ooh. and you could probably trim a bit off the back but fundamentally <laughs> because of the way that you sit in an atom which is essentially you know quite legs out 
yeah. your feet about level with your bum, you cannot squish it much. And so it was it was on a bit of a hiding to nothing. He promised he would sort of do some more maths if we were serious, and then um, we'd have to spend a year of R and D doing it. Probably, I know exactly. So, I was yeah, like, well, we were going to pay him for it, obviously, but it never came to that. But I wish I'd seen this bloody suitcase. I wish you'd gone. I wish you'd like phoned me. Because I could have actually answered the question without knowing about the Mazda suitcase car, which is my new favourite thing. Especially when I look up the history and it says um, that it was 33.6 cc, 1.7 horsepower, two stroke suitcase with four six inch (laughs) tyres. And this is the best bit the rear wheels could be slotted into the outside of the case while the front wheel would pop through a removable hatch in the front of the case. <laughs> it took one minute to assemble, a top speed of 30 kilometres an hour. And while the original prototype was was accidentally destroyed just a few months after the Fantasy Yard event. <laughs> what do you mean, accidentally <laughs> destroyed? Accidentally destroyed. <laughs> what? What well, I reckon, so one of the employees of Mazda just got right on it on the sake and just battered it into like a, a, a ditch or a, a, a pond, into a pond, what? and it sunk. And they were Nothing like, oh is- shit, it's gone. Nothing's accidentally destroyed. I mean, it's, I, the pairing of accidentally and destroyed is a funny word. <laughs> it's like, where's where's the wedding cake? I'm afraid it was accidentally, accidentally destroyed. It <laughs> <The snap laughs> so was accidentally destroyed a couple of months after the event. But one suitcase car still remains in existence and it works as it did. 24 odd years ago heavens above so mazda still or if you're american mazda they still they still have an amazing suitcase car and this this is great because i can add this to my mental um uh, archive of knowing about my my favorite motorbike in existence which is called the the valmobile v-a-l like a woman's name the Mm -hmm. valmobile you need to look that up it's a wonderful motorcycle which folds out of a metal suitcase and it was specifically designed oh. to go on trains and on light aircraft in the 50s. It's very old, very, very Jeez. old. Jeez. Yeah, you know I've got an obsession with motorcycles that can fit in the boot of cars and things. <laughs> but this was like this is like the, the godfather of the Moto Compo from Honda. Oh, I And it's see. called the Valmobile and it's Valmobile bastard rare. The way scooter. Oh, and it's just great. It's they great. Have one, uh, and I want one. I see they they have Valmobile. one in the um, uh, Lane Motor Museum in the US. Have you seen which, it? Uh, no, I haven't. I've never been to the Lane Motor Museum. It's just that um, I know it's a it's a, it's a, a place that has a lot of quirky shit. Okay, it's a place I need to go as soon as I'm allowed to travel. By the sounds yeah. of it, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, think- in, um, it's in it's uh, in uh, Nashville. Oh my gosh! Well, Tennessee is on my list of places to go to as soon as I'm allowed because I've got people to see there and things to do there. Yeah, well, because we're funny. Well, I've never been. As I was saying about the Grand Tour, that's one of the places we went in the first series of the Grand Tour. We went to we went to Nashville to do a show there, and it was some of the most the most fun I've ever had on a filming trip. It was brilliant for lots of reasons. Yeah, really good fun. Just a great a great town. We had a lovely time there. Brilliant, well, I, brilliant time. I want to go there. Can we go there? I'll borrow a Valmobile, and then you can borrow Mazda's suitcase car, <laughs> and we can have one of the slowest, most potentially dangerous, very small road trips. Should we do it? It's a very big place. It'll take us forever to get. Well, let's just circumnavigate anywhere. Nashville over the course of a week. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, there's that main strip. I can't remember what it's called, where all the bars are, where they've all got bands on and stuff. That that's not that long. You oh keep just going gosh. up and down there. On I'd a, love that. On a Valmobile. <laughs> on a Valmobile and a, an amazing suitcase car. I love that. You have to use the term amazing. So if someone goes, what's this? You go, oh, this. It's an amazing suitcase car. Is it? Okay. Got distracted by the Lane Motor Museum website now, which i just go and have a look at that if you're bored. I love museums. Well, it depends what they've got, doesn't it? Well, sometimes they're boring, but these days they can't be because they don't stay in business. And they're not mm. really a business. <laughs> they're a charity, but you know, you know what I mean. But uh, no, no. I know what you mean because some of them, are, you know, they go to town and they go, oh, look, we've got interactive displays and all the curation has been made, you know, much more whizzy and 
popular and easy to read and everything but if you are like you know that pencil museum in Cumbria I don't really know how you sex up pencils except to you just don't. sort of you, you, you bloody, don't you bloody don't Rich there's one there's a creepy one up my way around here called a, a doll museum I've never even I've seen the signs for it I've never dared go near it imagine you imagine sleeping the night in a doll museum I mean seriously <laughs> It's yeah. Can oh. I tell you about we the two grotesque teddy bears we found in the loft of my parents' old house? <laughs> um, I mean, we knew they were there in as much as they were sort of like they'd belonged to. I love that ancient relative. Grotesque. They were, early, they were grotesque, right? You know, before they figured out how to make uh, teddy bears. Sort of oh yeah, cuddly. you did tell me. Were they? Yeah, you did tell me about. They aren't were they like hard carcass, mangy? One of them had got an eye missing. They were. I mean, grotesque is the word. They were horrible pair of uncuddly, mangy bits missing bears. Totally other. They're like salvage to the yard human bears. Eye. They were like they yeah, exactly. They were cat ass bears. And when we moved out of that house and my dad was moving into somewhere much smaller, we needed to get rid of a load of stuff. And so um we got a guy in who was an expert in old shit. And I was thinking, oh you know, there's a bureau in the corner there. About that's worth a few quid. No, twenty pounds. Oh. And it's oh, is it like my grandmother's old tea set? That maybe that's worth something. No, ten pounds. Oh, it's like oh, well, there you go. It's it's a cash in the attic thing where you go. Oh, have you got any cash in your attic? No. So <laughs> they haven't. But we fucking did because two, and I'm going to say it again, grotesquely horrible Victorian <laughs> teddy bears together were worth eight hundred pounds. Eight hundred pounds. And yeah, they were because people are really into like. Victorian toys, apparently, and that's probably why you know the doll museum exists. But Victorian full stuff, of horrors. Yeah, because well, Victorian stuff's um, just it's not warm and friendly, is it? It's it's just it's yeah, it's well, it's it's sort of it is it's Victorian, isn't it? It's very starchy and um, yeah. They didn't. I mean, they didn't have sort of talking dolls in those days, did they? Oh god, because the technology. Did, but imagine a talking Victorian doll. You'd pull a string out, and it would just go. I have a lot of respect for you. Yeah. Hello. Shall we be acquaintances? Would you like to shake my hand? No, I bloody wouldn't. <laughs> no, I'm not going to the doll. I'm not, I'm not going to the. I'm not going to a doll museum. I'm digging car museums, and I like general transport. There's a great tram museum in uh, the Peak District. That's cool. But no, yeah. I'm not doing dolls. Absolutely. Ooh, have you no ever way. been to the De Havilland <clears throat> Museum, which is just outside London? It's uh, it, it's no, uh, it's fantastically old school museum, where it's basically just a load of old things have been thrown into a series of sheds and outdoors. It's great. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Can we go? Big. Can we go one? Day? Yeah, I'll take you there. It's not far from me, actually. It's How far is it on a Valmobile and, a, and an oh, amazing yeah. suitcase car? A couple of weeks. But in a car, it would take you about 30 minutes. Oh, man. Oh, dear. Uh, I, I, um, I, I did that thing that I often do, and I think I've mentioned it on a previous podcast. I was coming back from, um, coming back from a, a shoot quite late, had the heated seats on. Uh, it was a miserable night. Put mm. a bit of, put a bit of um, magic radio on. Chill, chill, no, no, smooth, smooth radio. I smooth. think it was smooth, yeah. And they played um, Tracy Chapman, Fast Car, mm. which I like. It's yeah. it, it hasn't aged that song. You'd never know that no. was eighties, seventies, sixties, nineties, whatever. You just wouldn't know. I tell However, you what, though, that's one of those songs in the subset of songs that make you wait for the good bit. Yes, because it's got a wonderful chorus melody, but she makes you wait for it. You she, think it's coming. And she sort of double verses, or maybe even triple verses, and you're like, "Come on, Tracy, just do the good bit." She's good she's bit. she's good, and and it's very it's lo- it's a very loaded song, emotionally Isn't loaded. It? Yeah, oh um, God, yeah. So I do like it. On the other hand, last week when I was listening to this driving back from this job in the driving rain with my heated seat, and I was thinking, "Yeah, but Tracy, what what fast car has he got?" Like, you know, okay, look, beggars, listen, beggars can't be choosers. You need to get out of town. You know, you're in a desperate situation. You'll take anything, Mariva VXR, whatever. But listen, what's he? What's I think he? Just stay in the town and face what, the consequences. <laughs> what, what's he actually? What has he got? What do we think the fast um, car is? I'd love to well, know. Um, and, I mean, obviously, it's set in America, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, a, and it was 80s. 
Yes. Wasn't it? Mid 80s song? Like, actual answer, because I've always in my head um, had a had an image in my head of what that car was. Um, I always thought it was like a, a, a late 60s muscle car. Yeah. So but peak, for some peak reason, muscle car. Convertible era. one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's a bit it's, shabby because it's the 80s. So like uh, like um, a, um, a Buick Skylark with a big block in it or something, or a um, a Challenger or a yes, a Challenger. I think that's what I'm picturing. A Challenger convertible. Yeah. Which obviously now would be extremely valuable, but yeah, it'd be like two hundred grand if it was a big block. But when it was a... just absolutely grotty and and it's, yeah. it's only sort of well, it would have been mid eighties, so like you know, sort of. It'd it's, have been rust belt, rust belt old. spec, so it would have been mm. a bit frilly around the bottoms of the doors. Um, front wing a bit crinkled, you know, um, leaky, bit leaky. Oh, very leaky. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I think it's probably yeah that, and maybe um, probably gets driven as similar to the way Nick Nolte drives that Cadillac in Forty Eight Hours, which is what we talked about <laughs> a few months back. <laughs> Did you ever watch it after I asked you to watch piece? it? No, because I can't bear it. Oh you, my you god! You warned me that he keeps putting it into park when it's still moving oh it's like it's he it puts it through me he puts it into park when it's probably still doing 15 miles an hour oh um, hey you know you what? were saying the other week about um a delivery van uh kind of shut down on the move like like a pilot shutting the engines off on a plane and just gliding it oh gliding it, putting the handbrake on three clicks and just letting it kind of coast in i saw an epic one about two days ago <laughs> <laughs> a bloke amazon bloke in a in a in a Vivaro, and of course yeah, I was. swear to God, he was still doing twenty miles an hour when the engine shut off, and th- probably th- he was it was definitely still moving as as it felt. Like oh, he was in the back. Opening, and he was getting out. <laughs> if if it had no if it had no if it had if it had no bolt but a uh, bolt bulkhead, he'd he'd knocked it into neutral, killed the engine, and put the handbrake on three clicks. Already run into the back to sift through the parcels. The thing's <laughs> just the thing's the just back. on a set crash course. He's he's obviously just looked at the road and gone. I reckon it'll go down there. It'll go between those two cars. It'll be fine. Yeah, it's like proper, like you know, like Russian roulette cruise control, <laughs> isn't it? I love it. Um, I love those guys. They know those guys and women who drive delivery vans all day, every day, like hard. They know their vehicle. They know it. Well, they know it, but they don't <clears throat> have any particular respect for it, do they? No, they it's don't care a, about it's, it. It's, even by the standards of, of people who have to drive a van for work or a, or any kind of car that's just a work tool, they are really treating it like a, a tool. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a device that gets you around. Oh, my God, do you know what happened to me this morning as well? Sorry, just this is reminding me. Um, I, I got an Uber across town. And, um, of course you, you know, did. U- Uber roulette is always interesting. And it, usually it's a Prius, but, but no, up this morning... Um, Mercedes E-Class. I was like, oh, mm. okay, that's nice. New shape as well, you know, current shape. So wow, that's good, that's, nice. that's a serious Uber. Yeah, comfy in the back, nice ride, lovely. Uh, but the <laughs> the guy, because those E-Classes, you know, they've got the the gear selector on the automatic gearbox. Is a, is a column stalk. So you, that's you, right. It's on the it's on the door side in a in a, in a right and drive car. So you can't see what he's doing. But we stopped across a side turning. And someone wanted to came along and wanted to turn into it while we were stuck in traffic. And the bloke, the driver of my Uber, clearly realised he had a bit of space behind him. So he stuck it in reverse, crept backwards, made enough space for someone to turn through. All very good, good, considerate driving. And generally his driving was really good. But then <laughs> we sat in traffic for a bit longer and then the lights up ahead changed and the person in front did it a bit and then set off. And obviously at that point, you know, Uber drivers particularly, they, they're like, they just want to get the job done. So... He mashed it quite aggressively, <laughs> but he'd forgotten that he was still in reverse. And so, <laughs> and so we surged backwards. And thank fuck, we just stopped short of the car behind us. <laughs> and the bloke was obviously really embarrassed, but rather sort of go, oh, sorry about that, or anything like that. He just went, <clears throat> put it into drive, and then just carried on. I was like, was that... Was that an apology cop? Was he or cle- are you clearing your throat? It was really weird, but yeah, we were fucking close to smashing into the car behind. In a, in a brand I quite enjoyed new it, class. if I'm honest. I, I was trying to remember the last time I saw someone in a gear selection mishap, and uh, <laughs> and it's been a while. 
That's that. Uh, there's your John Peel band right there. Yeah, <laughs> this week's John Peel band is, of course, yeah, uh, live in session later on. It's Gear Selection Mishap. Um, <laughs> I once saw a bloke. I was I did some filming uh, with a guy who was a designer from Land Rover years ago, um, and he turned up in this one-off Freelander with flip paintwork on it, which wasn't offered in oh. showrooms, but it was something they were experimenting with. And uh, the director went, oh, we'd love to have that in the background while we're talking to you. And so this guy was manoeuvring it about, and then he backed up, and then he wanted to go forward down a slope. So he backed up, and then he just started coasting down the slope. And I was standing at the top of the slope, and as he went past me, I saw the reversing lights were still on. And I thought, oh, he's now coasting forward, but the car is still in reverse. He's got the clutch in. Uh Oh, no. And I sort of started jogging alongside trying to tell him. And it was too late. As the car got towards the bottom of the ramp, he obviously thought, oh, well, I'll need a bit more speed now. And he let the clutch out. And there was the most almighty noise. Oh, Oh, my goodness. It was grinding. There was grinding. (laughs) I love talking to you because I never know what we're going to get. It's like a a lucky deal. selection mishaps that I have at the moment. Um, I, 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 I embarked on this avenue without really thinking it when through. When was the last time anyway, you bump started a car? Oh my god! Uh, honestly, can't remember. Oh, it's great. I mean, it's when great. was the last time you bump started a car? I used to do it quite regularly when I had my Honda Insight of all cars. What? Well, because you know my Honda Insight had a, had an astronomic mileage on it. Mm. Well, sometimes it used to throw up the uh, IMA um, warning light, the integrated motor assist, which is the hybrid thing. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it it wouldn't go away without me taking it to a dealer. But one day I realized I could fool it. And what I used to do, and I don't recommend this to people at home, is I'd go to a very quiet lane near where I live that's dead straight and I'd have to drive along. So I had to start the car on the starter motor because it wouldn't use the, the, the normal kind of um, alternative quiet start method that it uses. Mm. So I started it on the with the conventional starter motor, drove it along, then immediately went onto this straight road, knocked it into neutral, turned the ignition off, so killed the engine, turned the... Um, ignition back on and then bump start it in second or third and then it started the engine of course and it reset its entire brain and it used to totally forget that it had thrown any <laughs> warning signs up. I used to what? do it I used to do it yeah I used to do it every couple of months uh. yeah every couple of months because of course it wasn't a plug-in hybrid so if the battery got really low it was starting to uh, get yeah. unhappy which is why a lot of people convert them to plug-in hybrid it's the easiest uh. quickest conversion is about 250 quid but is it yeah, yeah there's an after there's a guy that does it in the london area who specializes in it and it really saves the battery on those and it makes it a more efficient car too but um mm, interesting course, that was the um, early days of hybrid i the ashan for the near shan now um i was gonna uh, i was gonna look on twitter because i asked if anyone had anything they wanted to cover in this you show did. i've opened up <clears> twitter <throat> and the f- is it Pandora's <laughs> box? Well, it's a bit. <laughs> and someone here, Neil McMillan. Hello, Neil. Uh, he's just. Put, I bought an Astra estate from a musician who sold Terry Nutkins a Subaru Impreza for his son earlier the same day. The Impreza belonged to the musician's flatmate. True story. <laughs> hang on, just gonna have to rewind that. Hang on. So, I know. Hang on. So there's a lot to drink there. in there. Oh um, my goodness. So, so he bought an Astra estate. Yes. Picture that. Yes. Neil McMillan has bought an Astra estate. He's bought it from a musician. Yes. Neil has bought an Astra estate from a musician. What else has the musician been doing that day? He's been selling Terry Nutkins, the yes. otter baiting, weirdly Harry Metcalf on acid mullet type hairstyle. Man. <laughs> well, yeah, he's, who's dead, but yeah. Yeah, who's dead. <laughs> so the musician who sold. Neil, the Astra estate, earlier that day, <laughs> sold Terry Nutkins a Subaru Impreza, but the Impreza <laughs> was for Terry Nutkins' son. And, and the Impreza, in fact, belonged to the musician's flatmate. I mean, it's, I love it, these stories. it's a multi-layered that is, story. That is so... That is <laughs> it's got so, it all in one tweet. That's a proper rabbit warren. So, really and, is, and, and actually, yeah, 
I'd love to know how it came up in conversation though. He's gone. Anyway, yeah, the Astra looks good. I'll give you. I'll give you the, the, the money for it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, mate. Yeah. I'll just. Uh, I'll just tear off the bit on the V5. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You. Um. You been busy today? I have actually. Yeah. I sold. Uh, sold Terry Nutkins a Subaru Impreza. It was. Um, <laughs> it was for his son. Oh, was it? Okay. So you got an Impreza as well? No, it belongs to my flatmate. Oh, okay. Good. Right, Nutkins. I'll, Nut- I'll remember that. Nutkins was totally a Land Rover County guy, pre-defender. He was totally yeah, a county guy. But how, he had a lot of fingers mutilated or missing, didn't he, on account of him always raging up otters. So we got, I think, he got savaged by an otter, or maybe several. I think he yeah. might have struggled with heavy steering. Oh, so he went for a super light power steering model. He might have, yeah, he, sort of, he had defenders, and then unfortunately he had to buy... Had to chop uh, them in when his fingers got chopped off. Yeah, series three Jag XJ or something. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I really could... liked steering. Or oh. people who are outside of the UK and or people that are under thirty years old are going to go. Who on earth who is, the Terry fuck is Terry Nutkins? Terry Nutkins, Terry Nutkins look him was up. the look sort him up. We of did like Fred Dibner and people found out who he was. Yeah, so. he was like the sort of East London younger version of David Attenborough. East London was he? Yeah, he was from East London, but then he moved. He moved his whole family up to the Scottish Highlands when he became a That's... proper naturalist. Was it naturalist or naturist? I always get them wrong. Oh, I always get those mixed up. Um, naturalist. I think. Naturalist is naturist is where you want to take your clothes off, isn't it? Yeah, well, you're right. Terry Nutkins mm. was born in Marylebone, London. And spent I don't... most of his childhood there. He skipped school to spend time with the elephants at London Zoo. Look at that. You're I don't talk. I don't, I don't talk bollocks. I know what. Sorry, I, know. I was. I mean, I wasn't questioning you as such. It's just it seems <clears> it, it's somehow implausible. But um, yeah. Yeah, and then he Scotland. he moved up to Scot Scottish Um Guess guess how many children Terry Nutkins had. Well, I know he had quite successful sperm. I think he... <laughs> uh, was it five? Eight. Eight? Yeah. Well, he's driving... So what, hang on, he's driving around... In, he's yeah, driving around in a, um, a, a, a Ford Transit Torneo mm-hmm. back, back in the 80s because there weren't really many people carriers in the 80s, were there? You had um, uh, the, the do you know what I remembered the other day the Aspas, but they were very expensive. No, they do, you were. The, do you remember the Toyota Space Cruiser? Oh, the Space Cruiser! Yeah, a neighbour of mine used to have one of those, and it had optional electric curtains from memory, which I loved. Oh, did it? I what think a UK it, car or was it JDM. It probably was JDM because let's face it, who in England is going to pay extra for some very <laughs> creepy-looking <laughs> crematorium <laughs> curtains? <laughs> 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 crematorium. Yeah, curtains. they look like they do look like creepy crematorium. I'm going to shut these curtains, and then people are going to die. Uh, yeah, it's just a bit Ted Bundy. My old geography teacher um, had a space cruiser as well, Mr. Whedon, which well, there's one person I know will be listening to this podcast who will remember Mr. Whedon as well. So um, hello, Haz. Um, it, but uh, yeah, he had one. And then Witch Magazine almost toppled one over, I remember, in the 80s while testing it. It was like a sort of prototype the elk, elk test. test. And then sort of went into a big campaign about they were dangerous and they should be recalled or something. But the space but, um, was the space cruiser. It was eighties, wasn't it? Was it really yeah. quite? It's probably quite fashionable now with its squared off. Yeah, and I think a lot of them looks. are two tone as well, so they look very sort of, you know. Were I'm I'm I think the musician Jarvis Cocker from Pulp used to have one. Really, I'm almost. Did he at one point have like a big American station wagon as well? Oh, in I Paris don't. or something. Well, that sounds very inappropriate. Um, I know. Yeah, he. I think Jarvis Cocker um, sold. No, sold. He crushed a hill. I remember reading it. He crushed a Hillman imp. He had a Hillman imp for years, and then he mm. crushed it into a cube and and <laughs> raffled it off to a fan, <laughs> and then and then bought bought a, um, a Toyota or was it Mitsubishi Space Cruiser or a Toyota? I can't remember. Toyota. Uh, Toyota. I'm sure Jarvis Cocker did. I mean, I'm sound like I'm making it up, but um, I'm pretty sure he had. Um, I'm typing as I say this, just to confirm that I'm not talking absolute bobbins. I've just sort of randomly scrolled down Twitter and seen where it stops on the things that people wanted to cover. People are asking questions oh, yeah. uh, which, for which we thank you and we admire also your optimism that we will answer your questions after the last time we asked you for questions and then didn't do any of them. But there's one here that's quite good. Um, press car mix-up. 
ever had the wrong car delivered for a review or been double booked and had nowhere to keep one of the cars? That's from um, Triathlete, spelled T-R-Y. Uh, Kenny Harris is his actual user handle. Um, and it's just <clears throat> reminded me because once on a drizzly Friday late afternoon, a brummy man turned up on my doorstep and went, no, oh, mate, here for the car. And I went, what car? He went, DMG, ZT, ZT Estate, come to get it. And I said, no, I'm expecting one to be delivered. Oh, no. <laughs> so you haven't you haven't brought a car then? No, I've come down on the train. Went, oh, well, no. Well, well you, there is no car here for you to take away because I believe you're delivering it at the <laughs> factory. And, he, and, of course, it's Friday afternoon. Oh, no. And this obviously is when MG Rover still existed. And, uh, and it's Friday afternoon at Longbridge and everyone's gone home and he manages to finally find someone who goes, yeah, there is a blue MG ZT sitting outside the press garage. And oh, so the sh- poor bloke. Did he have to go and get bloke. it? Yeah, he got the train back to Birmingham. He went and got it. Oh, no. Brought it back. And then he... he he came back and he went, and he was a bit grumpy by this point, which is fair enough. What do you mean and a I, bit I, grumpy? It's what, like four hour round trip? Yeah, I can't remember why I'd sort of had to say, look, I really kind of need the car. But but then I realised that then he, and he went, right, back on the train. Then and off he went to the Euston station to get the train back to the Midlands. And then it was only then I realised that night I was driving up north and I could have given him a lift and I felt like a bit of a shit. But no. it was too late. Um, and yeah. But that's I, I, that's the that's the first thing that popped into my head. Press car mix up when a man arrived to deliver a car, but he'd forgotten to bring the car. With him. <laughs> what was remind me of the question? I don't know if I've got an answer to it. Um, have you ever had the wrong car delivered for a review, or been double booked and had nowhere to keep one of the cars? Or been oh, I've been double booked and nowhere to keep. Yes, I've been double booked before. I had there was a time when I had multiple cars coming. I had about three cars delivered within. 24 hours <laughs> and but you've got at least you've got a drive haven't you so you can sort of stash things a bit I've got the drive here is quite big the previous house the drive wasn't very big I had to do quite a lot of kind of um, <clears throat> logistics um, yeah I'm trying to think what it was I remember being given a car and they they never collected it um, so I, it was supposed to just be a week's loan, and it and it went on for about another week. And I, then I kind of went, look, um, where when do you when do you want want it back? And they were like, oh, oh, our records hadn't even told us that we still had it. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and I remember when um, when the just before the Bentley Flying Spur came out. Yeah, it was the Spur. Um, they gave me. Uh, I said, "Can I drive the the outgoing car to remind myself because it's been a while since I drove it?" And that was the the, the original spur was it looked like a sort of phaeton, didn't it? It was a bit phaeton looking. Yeah. Um, and they gave they said, "Oh well, we haven't really got one. Uh, we've sort of got rid of them all." I went, "Oh, that's a shame." And then they went, "Oh, hang on, we've still got a, like a pre production like mule. Do you want us to just <laughs> drop that off?" So it was brilliant, but they Bentley dropped off this car, and it was it was really like it looked like a, a it had done a hundred thousand rep miles, and no one had ever cared about the interior of it. So you know, it obviously had pre prod dashboard bits, and it had, had you know holes where they'd put diagnostic equipment in it. It felt like a kind of ex police bought at an auction <laughs> Bentley <laughs> flying spur. I tell you what, though, it drove really well, but I did feel a bit like, sort of like boy. Boy done good, you know, a bit gangster driving around in this a slightly grubby, war torn Bentley. Yeah, I don't know of any others. No. Um, ne- next one. I just, I just scroll. Well, I just scroll down, and uh, who should I see um, uh, pop up here where, where I stopped? But you, um, admitting that you were gifted a car, but you can't reveal what it is yet. Are you going <clears> to <throat> reveal? Going to reveal it on your channel? Presumably. I'm going to reveal on my channel. Yeah, I have been gifted. And this is the a one car. you sent me a photo of in the week. There is that is this one. Something different. Uh, this was actually oh, this is some, something. This is something different, actually. What? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. I know. I know. <gasps> it's 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 one of the very few good news stories of 2020. <laughs> okay, but you're, um, you're gonna. You're I'm gonna, gonna keep um, it. It's it's exotic. Um, it's rear-engined. What? Yeah. You heard me, Rich. <sighs> 
You oh, me. hang on. Wait, 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 wait. I think you might have mentioned that this was in the offing. I think I know what it is. Well, well I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil your thing. Yeah. I'll move on to another thing. I've just move on to another thing. I mean, um, it's a um, shame that it's not a 911 GT3, but you know, it's always a shame it's not a 911 GT3. <laughs> um, uh, Gareth Saynor has asked best slash worst gifts from car manufacturers at a launch. Um, I think we both missed the heyday of big Blagola. What, like I, I huge laptops like and stuff and yeah, full so ski suits? Yeah, people used to go to, I don't know, go, like go, go to South Korea with, with Daewoo and they'd be given a laptop in the 90s when laptops were, well, they were, I mean, they were too grand. as big as a Daewoo, but they were also too grand, yeah, <laughs> and a bit of a novelty. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I never, I don't know, I've never been on that many launches, really, and I've always just sort of, got you know this one where they'll give away a little model of the car which is nice you know and it sort of also doesn't feel too sort of like who this is grubby but my favorite i got given a tablet um, did you what, yeah i'm, I'm actually that. looking at it it's still in the box it's a motorola did, did you yeah it's a motorola zoom by who uh honda when the the first of the civics that wasn't the spaceship was launched Oh, really? I know that huh. I'm sure it's got a number and a letter moniker, but I don't know oh, what it is. Definitely. It's, it's the first, this is, this is, this it's is, the it? one that came after the one that hasn't dated at all because it still looks completely futuristic. Yeah, the one um, that sort of tried to do the same but just wasn't quite as good. Yes, that car. Yeah. So it was probably a good decade ago now, maybe, I don't know. Mm. Um, I once went to Germany to drive the Mark... Five Golf, yeah, Mark Five, one of my favourites. Yeah, it was nice. Quite surprised because after the Mark Four, which was a bit flabby, mm. Mark Five was was pretty good. And we went to Germany to drive it with with um, uh, Andy Morgan, the photographer from Evo, and we went and we did a story for Evo over there, just a first drive. And um, it was a major thing. You know, we went to Wolfsburg, and they'd taken over this huge area of Wolfsburg to do this whole sort of international launch event. Uh, but no, no, no Blagola, and that's fine. It was like we had to drive the car, drove the car, went home. We flew back to Heathrow, and our cars were all parked uh, in a hotel car park nearby. When we went back, everybody's car on the front passenger seat, they'd left a little paper bag, and it had a model of the Golf in it. Nice. Nice. And then it, and then it had a bottle of water and a bag of crisps. And it felt like you'd been to a children's party a little bit. <laughs> it was quite sweet, but I'd never seen that before. I was like, oh. I quite like that. I playing. quite, yeah. yeah. it was nice. But it's like you've spent probably a billion euros launching this car, building like a, you know, sort of semi-permanent marquees and things like that all around your factory to show off bits of the gearbox. But that means you've no money left for the Blagola, so bag of crisps in a paper bag is, is what it is. But that was cool. It was quite nice. I'd like that because, again, it just stops you feeling grubby. Um <laughs> If, if they went, oh, and by the way, uh, when you get back to your car, you will find a uh, state of the art laptop and a prostitute in it. And you go, oh, I don't know. I, mm, but but if you if you just go, oh, look, there's a bag of walkers. And if you're feeling really guilty, that you could just give them to um, a your tramp children or something. Or a yeah, tramp. Oh, yeah, the, yes, yeah, tramp. and tramp. Yeah, yeah. Um, I flick down again. Mark Jackson asks, uh, good car dash shit engine shit car dash good engine discuss good car that's, shit that's engine good shit one. car good engine <clears throat> I'll tell you one that comes a bit close good car shit engine was my first car Ford Ka because yes. lovely lovely chassis lot to like about the Ka but, that's a very um, modern but, first car I keep, uh, really modern I know I, I mean yes. amazingly modern well it was only yeah it was because I, I, I kind of saved up and I didn't and I didn't need a car until suddenly I did need a car and then I got a bit of money put by and I bought a, a second hand but you know but I know it's a bit weird isn't it I never I never had a, an absolute shitter well you have I did later yeah I was yeah, going to say you work later. you did the opposite to everyone else you worked up to a shitter whereas everyone else worked <laughs> up to something more modern and reliable but yeah the engines that were a bit tappity they were uh, yeah, I'm trying but, to think of a car with a lovely engine that was not a very good car. Oh, I've thought of another one. The mm. that Cadillac S T S. Oh, the, the, North, the North Star. The North Star V8. The nice 32 engine. valve. Yeah, really good yeah. engine for hot rods and stuff. Pretty piss poor car. Yes, oh, it was a piss one. poor car. The old shape Nissan Micra, which was 
a bit disappointing generally. And, yeah. And then um, I drove, they introduced it later. I drove the one with so the engine had a little supercharger on it. Very little supercharger. Oh, yeah. I, rem- I do remember really, reading about that. It was a good luggy engine and it, it really, you know, it's sort of, because those micros are quite light, I suppose. And it just, yeah. It just clipped along and it was just a nice engine, just flexible and, and it sounded okay and all this sort of stuff. And you just went, oh, it's actually a surprisingly good engine in still quite a dismal car. Yeah. <laughs> So there we go. Well, a friend of mine bought for about a thousand quid two years ago. Um, a, a, what was the sort of the the very dull Corolla body shape, but with a hot engine? Uh, what was oh, it? not the T. Yes, T bag or something. T T Sport. T Sport. T the T bag. <laughs> yeah, and that the engine in that is gorgeous and um, Ooh, well. resilient. Yeah, but it's because it, it's got a, a, a VTEC style um, cam switch over thing. It does, but it happens about a hundred revs before the red line. Yes, and it's it's quite nice. In did you ever try it in the Celica? Remember that last Celica? Yes, that nice lightweight Celica, which was a really lovely car. Actually, they 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 were sort of, never they, got the credit. They, they don't deserved, have a pedigree, do they? Those Celicas? no, they're great. They're really lovely. I always yeah. remember. I like those both. The both the engine. Cap- output I, I, but, rem- I remember that Celica because it was a bloke we, we featured one in on Revs magazine when I was on Revs and it was the cover car and mm. and, the, and the guy had put 18 inch wheels on it and spent 18 grand modifying it so it was all about oh the God. yeah so we did a mm. what we did a 118 118 themed shoot where at the time <laughs> remember those blokes <laughs> dressed in bad 70s running shorts and slack vests and I was dressed up as one of the 118 guys or 1818 as we would call ourselves and I rem- I only remember this now because I broke my foot on the shoot and had to drive I had to had to drive home with a broken foot and it was and, it was, and I was in so much pain when I got home I couldn't climb the stairs to go to bed so I had to sleep on the floor in my own lounge yeah <laughs> It's amazing what you remember, oh just because of a Celica. Yeah. How did you break your foot on the well, Celica? Well, we were jogging along next to the Celica, and the photographer was getting us to do the sort of high leg jog, and we were just oh. we were just dicking about. But unfortunately, we were jogging along on the pavement, and I was looking at the camera or the other guy that I was with with the bad running shorts on, and when I jogged off the curb without seeing it, and rolled Ooh. my. I really rolled my ankle and I heard my foot go cr- I made a horrible crunchy noise a bit like when you snap celery oh, and yeah. I and I kind of went oh that that hurts and and it wasn't so bad for the next couple of hours but then it started to just swell wildly mm, yeah. and I drove home and I was in was I in a manual I think I drove home in a manual and it was that that was wasn't great and then I I just couldn't climb the stairs to get to bed so I slept downstairs um, with a beach towel, and uh, oh my god! And then the next, miserable. yeah, I woke up and basically my foot was about seven sizes bigger, and it was purple. Oh and uh, um, drove myself I... to hospital in my automatic Jaguar. <laughs> and the doctor said, "How did you get to hospital?" I went, "I drove." She went, "You won't be driving home." I said, "Well, I haven't got any options. I've parked my Jag in the car park." So, uh, yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, um, that's just reminded me of something. My, um, uh, when I worked at Pebble Mill. Um, we had for some reason we, we had a, a Vauxhall Omega press car in like a three litre one of the late ones like an MV6 or oh, quite nice yeah and we <clears throat> a colleague and I were going to use it uh, to go we had to go up to the Toyota factory at Derbyshire because I think we wanted to film something there so we were going to go to a meeting to talk to them about it but for some reason the night before another guy in the office my mate Big John went I don't suppose I could borrow the Omega tonight because he needed a big car for something, something with a biggish boot. And I went, well, yeah, you can, but as long as you're back with it, good time in the morning because I've got to go, I've got to drive it to Derbyshire in it and we were going to take that. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Got to work. There's no sign of him in the office and I'm waiting. And we, of course we're, there is. We're, we're, we're due to go. And I was a bit like, oh, hey. so I rang him. I was like, John, come on, mate. You promised. Where are you? And he went, oh, no, it's okay. I... <laughs> I, I was doing some DIY last night. That's why I needed the Omega. I wanted to go and I think he went to buy some stuff, you know, bits from B and Q or something. I got home, I started like sawing stuff and I I've managed to saw through I think he sawed through his thumb or something. What? <laughs> yeah, anyway. So I'm really sorry, but 
I, so I had to drive myself to hospital. And I was like, oh, my fucking God, how much blood's in the omega? He went, no, don't worry, I, I wrapped my hand in tea towels. It's OK. I checked. There's no blood in the interior. I went to hospital, and they, they strapped my hand up. Um, and and, and uh, I think they, they said he shouldn't drive. But he said, no, I've got to drive because I've got to drop the car back at the office. And in his, his wounded state, he drove the omega back to the office <laughs> and dropped it off that night and left the keys in the oh, office for me. I was like, again... Oh. I seem to spend this whole podcast describing times when I felt like a bit of a shit. But yeah, because I rang him up in a terse mood, going, "Where's this car, you bastard?" And he went, oh, "I've sawed through I've, my own. I've thumb. lost my thumb." <laughs> yeah, despite losing like five pints of blood, I still took the omega back. To oh, the office. that's just <laughs> quite sweet. Those those um, Corolla T sets that we were talking about. <laughs> that one of them turned up at the Evo office once, and and it was Toyota. They just dropped it off, and they went, "Oh, it's, it's, you can have it as a long term test car." And everyone from Evo took it in turns to drive it around for a bit. And then we had to ring Toyota and go, we don't want it. What? Everyone hated it. Yeah, we hated it so much. What, because it, it didn't like, have anything about it? Yeah, it was just dismal. It was, it was a really sort of it's a good sort of flabby car actually, with a really zingy engine. So, yeah, it does fit crap car good engine. I thought though, of but, a the great engine car that nobody cares about, Mazda MX-3. Oh. 1.8 V6. Yes. It's, it's an engine I just want to buy... And, and just put to one side for, for something, for a project, for something. Yeah, just for shiz. Because it's a lovely, giggles. lovely, lovely, sweet, beautiful, wonderful, lovely little engine. And you just don't sweet, get small. Sweet engine. You just don't sweet. get small, big cylinder mm. amounted mm. amounts of engine. Mm. Uh, another engine which is not actually a car, it's a motorcycle, is the Honda Goldwing engine. Oh yeah. A few years ago when I was at the Tokyo Motor Show, I was Flat transfixed. Six. Yeah, I was transfixed by this there was a cutaway of it, it uh, rotating in a glass case next to the bike. I looked at the bike and went, well it just looks a bit cack to me, you know, it's mm. it's a bit jingle jangle, but the the, the engine is absolutely gorgeous and really compact. And yeah. the whole the whole time for the rest of the Japanese show and that night in the hotel I was thinking about what I would do if I bought one of those engines what I would put it in and I've decided I would put it in a, an, an old Volkswagen beach buggy because I think it'd possibly be the best engine transplant out there I've not done it yet and no. so, someone's listening to well, this and might go well you should do that you've got a Mazda briefcase car to build now haven't you I'm building don't a don't tell Mazda me you briefcase. haven't thought about a replica I hang on a minute have, this, I know you why don't I use the MX3 1.8 V6 <laughs> Can you imagine a V6 suitcase? Bloody hell. What a widow maker. You can turn up at the green Jesus hell in it Christ. and people will be like, oh, I've got my GT2. You can, you can, I'd, I'd take your GT2 and I'll raise you. I've got a cycling helmet on and a very large Samsonite that's a V6. <laughs> a child cycling helmet. Now, look, listen, look. Um, we Thank you for your questions and your things on Twitter. I'm sorry we haven't really covered that many of them, but, you know, um, we are... Um, useless uh but we do need to talk to people before we before we finish we've got to tell people about the thing that we're doing this coming week which is uh we are presenting some bits and pieces from goodwood speed week oh yeah which starts on friday friday the 16th of october um and goes on all weekend so friday saturday and sunday this week uh there's live car racing and all sorts going on exhibition down at stuff yeah it's exhibition like exhibition stuff it's it's like a goodwood main motoring event but without spectators so instead yeah. you just have presenters like us describing and pointing at things if you liked our video where we walked around that field of rusty things and pointed at them and talked about them which is uh, by far the most popular video on the smith and sniff youtube channel um if you liked that um then it's we're sort of going to be doing a bit of that but the car's going to be much much nicer and we probably won't be as rude about them but um uh yeah we're doing a bit of that and we're doing a bit of i don't know what else chatting about things and intermittently popping up throughout the day so the whole thing is being live streamed on the goodwood website and then highlights of it which will probably not be our bits because we'll get cut out for being crap but um <laughs> but there are highlights going to be shown on itv4 across the weekend i don't know the times because i asked someone to tell me and they didn't so you're going to be your guess is as good as mine who knows but we are doing a few bits and pieces and um and we're doing a thing to celebrate 50 years of the range rover uh, so yeah there's going to be some good cars there too oh it's great I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to that 
I'm hopefully driving down in a Lotus. Oh, are you? Yeah, if I can. Ah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, um, that's it for this episode. But thank you ever so much for listening. As always, subscribe and like, or the other way around. We don't really mind. Just do it. Uh, I have three... <laughs> three other things to tell you one johnny has a solo youtube channel it is called the late break show and it's full of many excellent treats um electric land rover defenders uh your honda s 600 yeah 600 i started watching that video the other day and then i got rudely interrupted which was annoying because i was enjoying it well actually um, next but the, the week that this podcast comes out there'll be something quite special that's electric and off-roady but it isn't a defender it's it's uh, brand new okay it should be oh. quite fun. And right On now, trigger. there's a there's a there's a faux Ferrari 250 GTO resto model. That's the new one. That, yes, that, that's I've just come out. Seen that yet. Yeah. Uh, the second thing I have to tell you is that I still have a book out. It's called The Medium Sized Book of Boring Car Trivia by Sniff Petrol. It's available exclusively on Amazon, and uh, Volume Two will be with us quite soon, I hope. And the third thing I have to tell you is that The Rock's middle name is Douglas. Is that true? Yes, he's called the Douglas Rock. Dwayne Douglas. Oh yeah, that's it. Dwayne Douglas Johnson. Yeah. Johnson. Yeah. It's not massively yeah. glamorous, is it? No. That's where I'm going wrong. I'd leave my name normal, and I I should maybe vamp it up a bit. Well, just call yourself the well. The rock's taken. I don't know. The stone. The pebble. The oh, gravel. What, oh, what? The gr- the gravel. <laughs> the gravel. Johnny the Gravel Smith. Stop it! It just sounds pathetic. <laughs> Johnny the Gravel. If I was like, a, if I was a rally stage absolute king guru, then yeah, Johnny the Gravel would be like, oh right, it's going to be loose surface. The Gravel's going to smash this, but I'm not. You're not. No. Um, oh well. Anyway, maybe <laughs> something to aim for. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, in my um, Mazda suitcase car. You just see your V6 powered suitcase <laughs> on gravel <laughs> Jesus Christ the nickname is because of the gravel rash that is all over your face and body I'm going to do Pike's I'm going to do Pike's Peak in a suitcase Pike next year Peak on a suitcase <laughs> <laughs> the sequel to Across America on a suitcase with Johnny Smith um, who needs Charlie Borman and Ewan McGregor on motorbikes when not, he can have a suitcase dead. car they're not trying hard enough are they all right well that's that's that for this then thank you again for listening and uh, we will hopefully have your uh, eyeballs upon us uh, later this week at goodwood speed week friday saturday and sunday we'll be popping up intermittently and don't worry there's some actual other presenters doing the, the heavy lifting but we'll be there at some point um and we'll see you again same time next week monday and thank you for listening again I keep saying that i don't know why bye goodbye Would you like to shake my hand?